Welcome to Stephanie Barber's Capstone Project, Divine Romance, the Story of a Prostitute Heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, so my capstone experience actually begins with the words of God to the prophet Hosea, which are, go, take to yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness. Now, Hosea was a prophet of Israel, and he was a righteous man in the eyes of the Lord. Um, and like most prophets, he had a specific calling on his life. But Hosea's was a little bit unique because God, the righteous God of Israel, was telling him to take this woman of defilement and shame as his wife. Um, but Hosea obeys, and he takes Gomer as his wife, who's this woman who is a known prostitute. And Gomer lives up to the expectations. She runs away um, to other lovers, and she seeks in them provision and nourishment. Um, but in the end, they leave her wanting. Um, just as God predicted, he says that she will chase after her lovers but not catch them. She will look for them but not find them, Hosea 2.7. Um, and what are God's orders after this happens, after the wife runs away? Um, surprisingly, they aren't orders of judgment and rejection. Instead, he says to Hosea, go, show your love to your wife again, in Hosea 3. Um, now, this is a scandalous story, especially in the time of Israel when Adultery could get you stoned or worse. Um, but God's actually doing something very intentional with Hosea and Gomer's story. You see, this is a time in Israel when they are actually running away. And they're showing a sort of prostitution to these other nations who are promising them provision, um, nourishment, and they're promising them treasures. Um, but God says that, and they're going to suffer for it too. They're going to find that they were better off with their husband in the first place. And yet after Israel's suffering and betrayal, like Hosea to Gomer, he's, he says about Israel, I'm now going to allure her. Um, even though she's committed an unpardonable sin, Hosea is commanded to take his, back, his wife back into his home again and to love her. Um, in the same way, though a spirit of prostitution has plagued Israel, uh, the great lion of Judah in Hosea 5 will fight to win her back again. Um, so my capstone experience, that's kind of the story that inspired it. Um, but what I kind of wanted to learn and what I think I did learn through my experience was what prostitution means, both in the physical sense and in the spiritual sense. Uh, and I learned a lot about love and God's love and the redemption that is passionate and reckless for his people. And I also tied in an aspect of music in my spring portion, which I believe is the response to that amazing love that he shows us. Um, so the first, the actual experience that I got to do was inspired by that line, a spirit of prostitution leads them astray. Um, and I just wanted to know, what does this mean, a spirit of prostitution that God is referring to? And so I had the opportunity to volunteer at the Esther House, which is a ministry of Open Door Ministries, which um, takes in women who want to get out of prostitution and want to get back on their feet again. Um, and through that experience, I learned a lot about the misconceptions of women who are in prostitution. Uh, I learned about the shame that plagues them, and I learned about the bittersweet path to redemption that they must take. Um, and so about these specific women, some of the things that bring uh, prostitutes into the business or young girls into the sex industry um, are a lot of the time their family background. 98% of abused children, are, um, or 98% of women in the sex trade were abused as children. Um, there's a lot of fear and coercion that draws women in. There's poverty that is a huge piece of it because they feel like they have no other choice and nowhere else to turn to. Uh, there's mental disability that makes women turn to prostitution. There is, um, once you're in it, it's like a, it's almost a financial trap that you can't get out of. Um, and even if there is a physical or financial possibility for them to escape, like the Open Door Ministries, uh, these women are also tied down by the concept of shame, which is like a stone tied around her ankle um, stops her from even feeling like she's worthy of leaving. Um, her identity has been broken because of the abuse, um, the sins of her own heart, and the sins that people have committed against her. Um, and after being in darkness and in pain for such a long time, the light of the truth can hurt and can be a scary thing. So that also stops women from coming out of prostitution. But um, when, it, when she does find that courage to step up and that humility to realize um, that she needs help, there is a process of redemption that is actually very beautiful. I got to speak with the director of the Esther House, and her name is Danielle. Um, she told me the story of a woman who came to them pregnant. Um, this woman had been pregnant before, but she had been addicted to drugs. 
um, and unable to keep custody of the child, unable to even really remember the process of pregnancy. Um, and Danielle herself is actually pregnant at this time. And so there's this cool journey where they get to walk together in a new and redeemed um, motherhood experience um, where this woman thought that her only hope, or not her only hope, her only journey in life was going to be pain and um, loss and brokenness. But because of Jesus, she found that there can be redemption of what was lost. Um, he came to bring her life to the fullest, and she found it. Um, and through my capstone, I learned a lot about the sickness in my own heart because as I was reading the story of Hosea and Gomer, and as I was listening to the plights of these women, I started to see my own story being played out, and I started to see the plights of my own heart. Um, Gomer and Israel were lured in by false um, promises of an abusive lover, and in the same way, in First Peter it says, my enemy the devil prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But to me, his voice doesn't sound like a roar. To me, his voice sounds soft and sweet and convincing. Um, in the same way in Hosea, Israel was promised her food and her water, her wool and her linen, her oil and her drink. She was promised nourishment and treasure. Um, maybe not literal nourishment and literal treasure are what the devil uses to convince me, but he uses, tries to tempt me with nourishment of my spirit um, and the treasures of this world, trying to get me to feel satisfied by them when only my true husband can satisfy those desires. Um, some of the lovers that I learned that I need to face are pride, lust, pleasure. They promise me satisfaction and healing, but they leave me wanting every time. Um, and in the same way that these prostitutes and that Gomer and that Israel was tied down by shame. I am also burdened down by shame, and it stops me from leaving these lovers, even though, like in Hosea 7.13, God says about Israel, I long to redeem them. He wants to make them whole again. They just have to turn their face to him. Um, and this, that's the same with me. I, he longs to redeem me. He wants to make me whole again. I just have to turn my face to him. Uh, and that's where the virtues that I wanted to learn kind of came in, which were courage and humility. Uh, because I believe this process of going back to your husband, um, in set Gomer's words are, I will go back to my husband at, as at first, for then I was better off than now. She had to exhibit humility and courage in turning away from the lovers that promised her protection in life. Um, she had to admit that she was wrong, and she had to go back to her husband as at first. Um, so yeah, that's what I learned as far as virtues. Um, and inevitably, in having these experiences and studying and researching these topics, I had to ask the question, who is this lover? Um, Hosea and Yahweh embraced the one who scorned them. Um, she defiled herself, and her wounds were of her own doing. But he embraces her anyway, and he takes her back, and he has no reason to. Um, he has no compulsion to do that, but he takes her anyway. Um, I believe that these stories exhibit a lot of God's character, I see this pattern starting to form through the story and through real life, which is the good lover which is, and the wife that he loves so much. But then you have the wife's betrayal and then the, her abuse at the hands of false lovers. And yet, at the end, radically, we have the rescue of the good husband who will take her back in again. Um, and this story does not align with human patterns at all. There's no revenge or rejection. There's no eye for eye or tooth for tooth. It's just a backwards flip. It's a left turn from what you expect. Um, and I started to see that not only is the story of Gomer the story of Israel, and not only my own heart, it's also the story of the church as a whole. Um, and in reality, the story of Hosea is the gospel story played out on a small scale. Um, Jesus is the lamb without blemish or stain that can take away and is worthy to take away the stains of the bride that ran from him. Um, He's the bridegroom who will receive her at last and forever. In Hosea 3, 19 through 20, it says, I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. In both Matthew and Hosea, it is declared that God desires mercy, not sacrifice, and that Jesus was sent not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Um, so really this small book that people even usually read over in the Old Testament is a saga of the redemption that God wants to show to the world who has turned from him and scorned him. Um, like I said, my 
project also had an aspect of music. Um, as a lot of you know, like I'm very involved in worship leading. Uh, I love music. It's a weakness of mine. I'll spend money on it. I'll waste my time on it. Um, it's just I have never had the time to start to process why that is and why music is such a weakness for my heart. Um, but so I did interviews and I did um, a lot of research about music and church history and what music actually is. Um, and the conclusion I came to was music is the response that helps us to communicate the emotions stirred by this radical love that God shows us. Um, music has a mysterious power that we can't explain. Um, and it's a lot like the mystery of God's love for us and his love for the prostitute. Um, it has sway over the subconscious mind and it can stir emotions. St. Augustine defines music as the art of the well-ordered. Um, in music we see this paradox of order and structure that allows the heart to understand what the mind cannot. In my interview with Luke Jackson, he said that music moves head knowledge to heart knowledge. Um, it kind of, we see it all throughout history in, in the church and in biblical history that music is the immediate response of the people to God's goodness. Um, after the Israelites and Moses <coughs> were able to leave the Egyptians and escape from Israel to Exodus, um, their immediate response is song. It says in Exodus 15 that then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Uh, the horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. It says that Miriam, the sister of Aaron, takes out her tambourine and leads the women in song. And that's their immediate response to this miracle that God has done of closing down the sea on their enemies. Um, Ooh, sorry. Um, in Ephesians 5, it says, Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit. Sing and make music to your heart, in your heart to the Lord. <clears throat> we can't necessarily get to un the understanding of God's love ourselves. Uh, music takes us that last mile um, that our words and thoughts can't take us. Um, it's a response to the incomprehensible backwards gospel that we just talked about um, in the story of Hosea. Um, another lesson I learned from my capstone was the idea of failure. Uh, my fall capstone, I had originally planned to actually write music of my own. I was going to write love songs from the point of view of Yahweh God to his fallen lover. Um, but what I actually found was I didn't really have time to do that, or I didn't really have um, the ability to put in the effort that is required. Um, and in talking with Luke Jackson and Mr. Butler, um, just about the idea of having songs that, whose, that lyrics are spiritually and scripturally based, uh, theologically sound, um, is really important in worship music. I've seen weakness and I've had a frustration of my own heart of music in the church that um, is based a lot on emotion but leaves truth behind. Um, so I've learned that if worship leading is something that I want to pursue, um, intentionality and discernment are really important in choosing worship songs that a congregation will sing. Um, another question that I kind of asked with the worship aspect was why is it, why do we do it together? Why is it assumed that there's going to be a musical piece of the Sunday morning service? Um, and I think the answer is in Psalm 33.3, sing to him a new song, play skillfully and shout for joy. Uh, the creator of music calls us to play our instruments and to play them well. And in order to do that and to make good music, you need worship leadership. Um, so if I had any doubts in my mind that worship leading or worship pastoring is um, a necessary part of the church, I don't have them anymore. Um, and I've also discovered that um, my love for music, I might, this might actually be something that I could do as a career um, in my future. So. Yeah, and kind of my final challenge to kind of wrap it up for you guys. Um, we were faced with the question at the beginning of the year, if you could pursue any experience that would make you a better person, what would it be? And when we received this question, I was at a loss. I had no idea what to do or I didn't know where to start. Um, but I think reading this story um, has shaped my heart completely. And I hope that you guys have the chance for your hearts to be shaped as well. Um, because it sounds harsh and blunt, um, but I just have had to come to the reality that I am a prostitute at times, and that we all are at some points in our lives, in my heart. Um, 
And I think that there's value in coming to that realization because once we realize the fullness of our brokenness, the magnitude of God's grace kind of comes to life. Um, in Psalm 51, 17, it says, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Dietrich Bonhoeffer has this concept of cheap grace, which is kind of the idea of grace accepted without understanding the fullness of what it cost um, and the, the radical love that caused this good and righteous husband to take in the filthy wife, which is what we are. Um, we have betrayed him countless times in our individual lives and as a church. Um, so my challenge to you guys is to look into yourselves um, and identify the lovers as I've had to do that might be calling you away from your true husband, um, the one who wants to fulfill you and bring you real life. Um, I would encourage you um, in humility and courage because God is in the business of redemption. Um, you need only turn your face to him. And that's what I've learned a lot. Um, this, this is put simply, my project has taught me how crazy Jesus' love is um, and that I need to remember it daily. It's a thing that I have to turn back to because my heart has a spirit of prostitution in it. So it has this tendency to turn away and run away. Um, and in response, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Um, so Jesus loves you guys a lot. And go and make music in response to that. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Open book. <laughs> yeah. In your experience of these decisions, these are understanding each other. Would you suggest, or what would you suggest, that you can undergo uh, to stay involved in that would uh, possibly help them experience some of those same learnings as they continue through current? Yeah. Like, do you mean like volunteering or like? Yeah, Yeah, Esther House. Esther House. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something you think that they could benefit from at some point in time? Yeah, I mean, like it's definitely a sensitive topic, and it definitely requires like a heart for it. If you would be interested in like um, pursuing like volunteering there, I would I would say wait until you guys are older at least. Maybe you guys, if you would be interested, I know they always are looking for volunteers, um, but also. If you want to like learn more about it, like scripture is so rich in this story. Like I've I've talked to so many people, and so many people don't even know that Hosea is a book in the Bible. So just go find it in the concord, not the concordance, the table of contents, um, and read the story because it's really cool. Yeah. Daddy, Dad, Roger. <laughs> What'd you say? I did. I wrote some poems and stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't have the time that I wanted to put into it, and I felt like I needed to put into it if I was going to do it well. Yeah. That's all we have time for. Thank you so much for coming to Central Explorers. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy your next session. Thank you. I'm free! I'm free! <laughs>